Hello and welcome to this Construct 3 demonstration where I'll show you how to create a 3D rotation of a 2D sprite. So here you have the output where you can see the duck and whenever I click left on the duck it starts spinning like that. So then eventually it stops and I can also have multiple ducks on my screen like that and they all spin independent of one another. So, how does this work? Well, actually, let's look at the layout here, where we'll see that we actually have two ducks here. We have the uh, duck outline yellow here, and we have the back of the duck. And as you can see, they're just spawned on top of each other here, and they're also having the tween behavior, and they are in the same container. That's essential, because whenever we create and duck outline yellow so the yellow one here it automatically also creates this uh, back um, side of the duck actually so that's essential what do we do on the event sheet well in the event sheet when we whenever we create a duck we set the front face of the duck to 100% opacity so it's visible but the back face we set it invisible and for, in order to make this work, we have to have uh, an instance variable on the, uh, the duck outline here that says original width. Or the width is original width. And we initialize it to the width of the duck itself. And we also have a variable called t for timing. And we just initialize it to 1 because that's what the logic you'll see in a minute dictates. So that's what happens whenever the duck is created. Actually, what we're seeing here, if we go uh, into the, uh, the logic here, or in, if we go and see what happens here, by the way, you can see the two instance variables. What happens when we are starting to rotate, we are actually tweening the width of uh, the image. So we're going to do that, and then we're going to do that. We're going to do that constantly. And by doing it fast enough, it, it seems like it's rotating. So we're going from 100% width to 0% width to minus 100% width. That's what we're going to do. And as the duck rotates, whenever it hits a negative width like that, we're going to show this backside. And once we go back and we show a positive width, we're going to show the front side as well. And this is going to be hidden. So we're actually just flipping around by going from a positive width to a negative width, faster, first fast, and then slower, and slower, and slower, and slower, until it comes to a standstill, of course. And then um, we're going to flip around the, uh, we're going to make this visible whenever the, uh, the width is positive, and we're going to make this visible whenever the width is negative. And that's what we're doing here, actually. Whenever we're uh, clicking with the left mouse button on a duck and t is bigger or equal than zero remember we initialize it to one here uh, so it should be bigger or equal to one rather and i said zero but it should be bigger or equal to one what we're going to do is we're going to initialize t to a very small number like 0.05 and we're going to say that it needs to start a tween and i call the tween shrink and it needs to start at 100 and it needs to end at minus 100 and it needs to do that in a time called self.t and this self.t we just initialize that to 0.05 or so, so that's very fast so it's going to go very fast from 100 to minus 100 and we ask it to ping pong so that means we're not looping but we are ping pong so with what it's going to do it's going to go from 100 to minus 100 and then back to 100 that's what the ping pong does here so once that starts, it's going to be flipping from 100 to minus 100 and back in 0.05 seconds. So that's pretty fast. Um, so what we're doing here is whenever that shrink is finished, and that's what we're saying here, that's this event that detects that this the shrink is finished. What we're going to do, we are for each of the ducks for which this uh, shrink is finished we need this for each loop uh, because if we've got multiple ducks 
um, that would, uh, if we weren't to have the for each loop, that would mean that the same uh, T would be uh, applied to all of the ducks at once, so that they would sync up actually the, uh, the, 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 the the rotation of the ducks, and that's not what we want. So we want the for each loop here and for on shrink finished for each of the ducks for which the on string has finished we're going to multiply the t times 1.5 so this t is going to increase a little bit and as long as that t is smaller than one we're going to start that shrink again so it shrinks again with the value somewhat larger and it comes back into this uh, event it increases a little bit and does that again and again and again and as it increases what you'll see is, of course, the tweet will get slower. So it takes longer for the tweet to complete, which means that the spinning of the duck will go slower and slower and slower, until at some moment, this self.t times 1.5 will reach a value which is higher than 1. And then this, this dot does not, um, this does not uh, apply anymore, this doesn't fire anymore, and at that time, the, the, the spinning will stop. So that's how this works. Um, but in order to, for it to show the backside, uh, whenever the, the the width is negative, that's what we're doing here. So we have this event called is tween shrink playing, and in this event uh, we can check the tween value using this expression here, self dot tween dot value, that gives me the current value of the shrink. And remember. The shrink is going from plus 100 to minus 100. So if we divide that up uh, by 100, we're getting actually a percentage. If it's 100, it will be times 1. If it's, time, if it's only 50, for example, it will be times 0.5. So it will be half of the width. And whenever we get negative, it might be minus 0.5 or minus 1. So that width, depending on the original width, remember we save here when we're creating the duck, we're going to set the effective width. So this effective width is constantly changing depending on the value which is set here and here. And then what we're going to do as well, of course, is set the back of the duck outline also to the same width. So they, they, all, they always sync their widths, actually. And what we then do is for the back and for the front, we're going to change the opacity. Um, if the shrink value is bigger than one, we're going to show uh, the front side, so the back side will be hidden, and vice versa. Whenever the, the shrink value is bigger than one, we will show the, uh, the outline here. So you can see here, it works with a conditional expression. So basically, that's it. That's what it's doing all the time. Let's show that again. We click it. Okay, that's not the idea, of course. The reason is because I need to set the exact position like that. That's what it does. So t gradually increases, which means that the the time of the of the shrink tween will increase, and it will take longer for it to do the animation. Like that. So that's it. I hope you learned something. Uh, as always, please like and subscribe, and see you next time.